Hey guys, this is key number five and it is about change, but more, more than that. It's about a specific type of change that I'm going to be drawing some oracle cards on. But first, I want to share two anecdotes with you because this is what led me to start kind of brewing on this. So... I was reminded of <laughs> these two things. One of them is from a very, very long time ago. Must have been like, I don't know. I was in my second year of college, so I don't even know when that was. <laughs> uh, it was like 14 years ago or something. Um, and my professor put on a video, like an actual videotape of... It was a whole documentary on Starhawk. I don't know if you guys know her. She's a pretty famous uh, witch. Um, has, done, has been doing like tons of work um, for a long time. And I don't remember anything about the video except for this one scene where she was dancing in a circle with a bunch of people. They were all wearing like flowers in their hair and like wreaths around their uh, necks. And I think it was like a, like a Beltane type of celebration. Um, but they were singing, and what they were saying was she changes everything she touches. She changes. She changes everything she touches. She changes over and over again. And, you know, back then I didn't know anything about any any of this kind of stuff, but that stuck with me all of these years I always remembered it so clearly I felt like it was important I didn't know what it meant and it's just been in the back of my head for all of this time and I didn't really know how to start putting that together until um, a couple of months ago I was reading a book with a character who, she was like a high, pri high priestess type of character. You know, in the book she was known as, um, they called her like the Reverend Mother, but you know, she was like the high priestess archetype. And she got into this situation where the this this new group of people that she met, like a whole new culture of people, they poisoned her. They put, they like poured poison <laughs> into her mouth and made her swallow it. And she had a very, like one of, one of her skill sets was having a very strong body connection. She was very connected with her body and she was able to use her, use her knowledge, use her power as a high priestess to help her body change the poison so that it wouldn't kill her. This was her initiation um, and the people who were who poisoned her, they they were basically like, you know, we don't want you here. You know, we, you know, we found you in the wilderness. We don't want you here. We're either going to, we're going to poison you, and you will either succumb and die, or you will prove yourself to be a high priestess, or you will prove yourself to be a reverend mother, and then you will take your place among us. So, sorry, I was interrupted by my cat. <laughs> She likes when I talk about high priestesses, right? <laughs> um, so anyway, so this high priestess character um, was poisoned and this was her initiation. She knew it was either rise to the occasion and change the poison or die, right? So she went within, she identified the poison. She was able to um, like help her body go through the process of breaking down the poison into its components, part, into its component parts and literally changed what it was, changed its substance. And, you know, the, the poison like flowed back out of her mouth and they collected it because then it, it was no longer a poison. It was this almost like a psychedelic drug, but the, the, the culture, the people in the book, um, it was like a sci-fi book. The people in the book used it to have like a spiritual experience with tens of thousands of people all at once. They would all gather together, the entire, the entire community, tens of thousands of people would gather together and all take part in this substance that the high priestess had changed 
That was the word they used. It was changed by the high priestess. They would all take part in the substance and then, then they would all become one, essentially. They would all become one. They could feel each other. They would become telepathic, you know, for a few hours as they took part in this ceremony. Um, and then they would be one. They would be all connected. And this resonated with me so hard, this idea that I mean, there, there's so much depth to that little story, right? Having to go through this initiation of basically die or change the poison into something magical, right? Or, but also having to bring the poison within yourself to change it, right? To change it. And that it only she could do it. No, like, no, no one else could do it. It was only the high priestess who could do it. It, it, it was like... um because she was the only one who had been through the training and through the initiation and who had the wisdom and who had the faith in her own self. She was the only one who could do this. And then not only did she change the poison into like a magical substance, she also, she was changed. She was irrevocably changed and her consciousness was changed and it was vastly expanded so that she um, was now in contact with all of the other reverend mothers, all of the other high priestesses, the ones that had gone on before her and the ones who would become after her, um, all, all together because they had all been through this same initiation of changing the poison inside of themselves and being simultaneously changed by the poison, right? So <laughs> the poison went into her and it was changed, but it also changed her. It was everything becomes changed because she touched it, because she changed it, because it went inside of her and she accepted it and she transmuted it and put it back out into the world. So I struggled a little bit to like articulate this into like a very clear sentence. Um, so that's why I'm gonna, I'm gonna just draw some cards and see whatever else wants to come through about this. Um, one thing I want to mention. One thing is I I know I know now the best part uh, the best part about making these videos is in the beginning I used to worry I used to worry when I couldn't articulate something clearly. I used to worry and I would think that oh I failed. <laughs> I didn't articulate myself clearly. And almost every single video I post afterwards I go Oh, now I could explain it better. It's like tomorrow I'll be able to explain this better. Today I can't explain it, but tomorrow I will be, but I wouldn't, I won't get to the point of being able to explain it better until I make the video. So it's kind of a, <laughs> like, you know, but this is what I know is I don't actually have to explain it to my satisfaction. I only need to explain it as best that I can because you guys understand things on an energetic level and you always impress me with how well you understand my inarticulate explanations. <laughs> um, and that's the cool thing because if you're listening to this and you can't quite pull it all together either and you can't quite make sense of it in your linear mind that's fine because it, this is the it's it's the energy right this is the energetic transmission we don't need to worry too much about the words which is fantastic <laughs> the other thing i wanted to mention is that i am recording this on the first day of scorpio season which is pretty fitting right and for all the people watching this not in Scorpio season, just, I think it's worth pointing out for you guys that these videos, I mean, obviously it's for a reason that I was meant to do this during Scorpio season. And no matter when you're watching this, no matter if there's anything Scorpionic or Plutonic going on in your reality at this time, tuning into these videos like opens you up to this Scorpionic portal. And around the Scorpio new moon, which is you know, in just less than two weeks for me, it's going to get, <laughs> it's going to get intense. So I can't wait to see what comes through around that time. But back, back to this, back to this. Top of my head is tingling. <laughs> um, and the Mercury card, mind, comes up. Mind. Who's that? Is that a depiction of Thoth?
this is the dog card about companionship companionship and obviously with the dog loyalty right loyalty companionship unconditional love ascension <laughs> There's a hand there. These appear to be like dove's wings, but I don't think that there is a dove depicted there. It's just the wings under the moon. Queen of Air. More wings. Butterfly. Intellectual mind energy, which surprises me. Although, that character I was talking about, the Reverend Mother, the High Priestess, if I were to give her a card that besides the High Priestess, it would be the Queen of Air. Interesting. Okay, let me like sit on this for a second. Okay. Okay. I get it. <laughs> I get it. I, I remember this is, I guess it's more storytelling because this is connected um, to something I experienced this morning. So first day of Scorpio season and I felt the Scorpio energy completely like wash over me. It, it almost felt like it was attacking me. And um I felt it literally in my head. So that that's how this is. That's why these mind cards are coming up. I was like, why, what does this have to do with all this air energy, this mental energy, this minded energy? But this morning, it was such a minded experience that I had. Um, I was literally just sitting there. I had just gotten off work. Um, and suddenly I felt like I was being attacked, like psychically attack, attacked. I thought it was a psychic attack. And it was the kind of thing that would have terrified me like two years ago but but now I was like I, I was just kind of sat there and I was like okay you know I got into like sat up got into it like <laughs> the meditative position right and I was just feeling into it, like what what's going on and I felt this massive pressure around my head and for I didn't I didn't know what it was and my first instinct was that it was psychic attack that somebody was sending like really negative vibes at me or that someone was thinking really horrible things um, in my direction and that I, I could feel them and that they, that I was being attacked by it. Uh, so I was just feeling it and then I could like feel it pushing into my head and it was just really strange. Like it was giving me a headache and um, you know, so I, I was just sitting there. I was like, you know, creating my ball of light, doing my whole thing. <laughs> um, and for a while I was like, wait, 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 okay, this isn't an attack. This is somebody pulling, pulling, a, a, like pulling thoughts out of me. I, I almost felt like I was supposed to retaliate. Like I was supposed to send angry thoughts at someone as if that even makes any sense. Right. I, I felt like, like I had this weird, like it, for like a minute, I was like, am I supposed to be angry at someone? And I, I almost felt like, Someone needs me to be angry at them. Somebody deserves my anger. And I had this whole thing like, I should be angry. I should be really angry and I should be angry at this person. I had a particular person in mind. I felt like I should be angry at them. And like, it was like, you know, that righteous anger. And then I was like, this is, this is bad. This is bad. <laughs> this is not, this is not what I want, right? This, is, this doesn't feel right. This feels weird. Like, what am I thinking? What am I doing? Well, what is, what is really going on here, right? Um, so I just, I just kept sitting there. I just kept breathing. Um, 
I just kept, you know, exhaling the light out of my chest and just going like, what, <laughs> what is this? And eventually the, the whole feeling subsided and, you know, I felt pretty, pretty sure that I was no longer under attack, um, or anything. And I kind of, then I kind of came back to myself and the whole weird, 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 weird pocket of energy just faded away. And I was like, okay. So I, I went over to my cards and I was thinking to myself, okay, that couldn't have been an attack because what, what, what have I learned? What has my entire journey taught me about being under attack? Every single time without, without exception, every single time without exception that I have been attacked. And there have been occasions where I have been like, like I have really been attacked by, you know, unpleasant entities, but every single time in the long run, I learned that in some way, somehow, those beings, that energy, they were me, like on some level, and like they were my projections, or it was an energy that I had put out and it boomeranged and was finally coming back around to me, or that the, in some other cases, it's like the, the person who was attacking me was like a very deep soul family member who, you know, we were working through this energy together. And then, you know, on a higher level, we are one being, right? So it's always, always, always the message for me is always that it's me. It's me attacking myself. There, There is no, there is no boogeyman out to get me. It is only me and my own energy coming back at me. <laughs> so I was like, okay, okay. That, <laughs> I, it was not an attack. That was just, that was like my, it was like me having a weird, like, temporary meltdown. It was so strange. Um, and then I clued in that it was the first day of Scorpio season. And then I was la ha, ha, ha. Um, and by the way, my cards, it was the ones that I pulled out. It was really funny. They absolutely confirmed that it was like myself. Like I was attacking myself on some level. That energy that I was feeling was my own energy coming back at me. And as I started to feel into the Scorpio season energy, I realized it was like, wow, this is energy that I have put out in previous Scorpio seasons. I used to have a very difficult time with Scorpio season, um, like I can remember in 2013, I spent the entirety of Scorpio season in bed, like crying and thinking angry, 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 horrible, horrible, hateful thoughts at myself, at the world, at everything. And I realized, I was like, wow, those are thoughts that I generated and here they are coming back at me. Um, but it was so interesting this morning, I essentially allowed them to come back into myself because that was part of what I did when I was sitting there. Once I kind of identified that it wasn't an attack, that this was some, some, in some way it was my own energy. I just kind of like sat there and neutrally allowed the, the, the what felt like negative energy. Really, it was just really splintered, really angry, angry type of energy. And I just allowed it to like absorb into my, into my light, right? I created a light bubble and I just like allowed it to come back into the light. It was then that like dissolved it but it integrated that energy back into me, right? It integrated the energy. It came back home. I integrated it. And since it was home, it could no longer, like, it, it wasn't boomeranging, right? It was, it's, I stopped the boomerang. I could have, initially, it's what I wanted to do. I wanted to send the energy back out, but that would have just boomeranged it back around again, right? So I accepted it, brought it in, brought it home, integrated it, and then went about my day. So the point of that story is <sighs> when something comes towards us that we that we can choose to change, you can always not choose this. <laughs> but if an energy comes towards you and you decide to accept it and receive it, and take it into yourself in order to change it, it comes in through the mind first. It comes in through the mind first. And that's why our thoughts are so, <laughs> you know, you know how your thoughts are, right? Your thoughts can, <laughs> you have thoughts that you would never want to share with anyone because they can be so negative. <laughs> so that's because your, your, your mind is, filtering that your mind is filtering that and that's actually our, our mind I never thought about this before your our minds are doing the rest of our system a huge favor because imagine if one of these 
boomerang frequencies, uh, like a, a negative, a shadow frequency, a negative frequency, whatever you want to call it. Imagine if you had sent it out and then it boomeranged back at you and it, and it hit your body first. I mean, maybe sometimes it does, right? Maybe it doesn't always hit our minds first, but imagine it hits your body first. Well, then you're physically injured or you're physically ill, right? Or imagine it hits your emotions first. And I think sometimes it does. And then you burst out into tears for no reason. You're having an emotional problem or, you know, whatever it is, right? It's, I think it's actually pretty convenient for these energies to hit our mind first because it can filter in through that mental space, which although our mental space can cause us many, <laughs> many things, <laughs> right? I think often it is the case that it's useful to allow our minds to filter that energy out. And that's like the first layer of filtering. And then we bring it deeper into ourselves, like bring it deeper down into our heart, into our lower chakras, into our body. It, it's easier for us to digest it. And I use the word digest because I think that's a very scorpionic type of thing. Um, a lot of people with really like lots of eighth house placements or Scorpio placements, they talk about um, like digesting trauma or digesting, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Like damage, <laughs> digesting damage, digesting toxicity, digesting difficult things, right? Scorpio energy really digests things, can break it all the way down, can break it all the way down. And that is kind of what we do. Uh, like you just, just think of your digestive system, right? You bring food into your body and you break it down and it becomes something else. <laughs> um, same type of thing going on with energy, same type of thing going on with energy. Um, bringing it in through your mental body, going through that first layer of digestion in the mental space. And then it filters down into your heart and that's what I think this dog card is here for. Because I, I am like such, such a dog lover. I'm sure you've all heard me talk about my dog, right? Um, to, to me, dogs, they're just like pure joy, pure unconditional love, and just pure loyalty, right? They are just the most heart-centered little beings. <laughs> and... Um, that is the next layer. If you digest something first with your mental body, then it comes down into your heart space and you need to digest it with your heart. And the only way to do this is digesting it with unconditional love. Whatever frequency is boomeranging back to you or whatever frequency, whatever toxic, whatever toxin, whatever toxicity you have just ingested in order what, that you've taken into yourself to change, need you need to like we change it with unconditional love. We change it with unconditional love. It's like if you're in a place with a lower frequency that you don't like, the best way to like clear the room of the frequency that you don't like, like even if you're in a haunted house, as I understand it, the best way the most effective way, the way that I would use, let me say that, the way that I would use um, to clear the to clear the haunted house would be to bomb the house with the most love that I could possibly experience. And that's even, that's more than just sitting in stillness and feeling unconditional love. Because I think, for me anyway, maybe it's because I, I have like a lot of earth energy, um, for me, I can experience the most unconditional love when I'm doing some type of activity physically with my body that creates extreme feelings of euphoria and compassion and love. And that's what I would do to, to shift the frequency. If there was a place where I didn't like the frequency, I would create love. I would create love in, with some kind of experience. It could be many different types of experiences, whatever it is, create the love to change the frequency. Same thing when you have taken a frequency inside of yourself, filters through the mental body first, and then it cha you change it in your heart. That's when like the nucleus is changed. When the nucleus 
of an energy, like the very, very core of it, when it's a seed enters your heart space and you can feel unconditional love for whatever it is, then it changes. Then it changes. It's been broken down to its smallest particles, its smallest constituent parts. And love is what changes it. I think that is why many of these stories talk about it's she who changes it or it's the high priestess who changes it because, you know, it is traditionally seen that it's the feminine that is loving, it's the feminine that is giving. So I don't really feel like gendered energy is very relevant for the silver ray because I think it is you know, it transcends gender in to a level that just, I'm not really going to be using masculine and feminine very much in this series of videos, I don't think. But that's, that's why I think if, if it helps, if it helps you to think of it that way, that it's the feminine energy that changes something with unconditional love, then roll with that. But yeah, and then, <laughs> and then what happens after that? Ascension, right? The energy can then be released back out of you. You are then ready to Continue on your upward journey. Continue on your upward journey. It's also something here about sharing darkness. Sharing darkness. <sighs> if you've ever been through an extremely challenging experience with someone, you know that sharing the darkness with someone and not just sharing the darkness around you, but sharing the darkness within each of yourselves brings out the love, right? When you, it, the people you are closest with, right? When have you bonded the most? It's often, <laughs> maybe it's late at night, maybe it's over a couple of beers, talking about your deepest, darkest struggles, your deepest, darkest fears, because there's something about sharing fears, sharing your darkness, right? Sharing your darkness that brings you closer together. And sharing your darkness opens you up to love that you wouldn't be able to access otherwise. And I think that's part of the purpose of the dissension cycle. It's to come all the way down into the deepest, darkest depths of the night, of the cosmic night, and to experience that dark night of the soul. and But in the darkness, we find and we ignite and we grow the seeds of love. And, and we change. We change the, the toxins, the poisons, the cancers, the, the bad. We change those bad frequencies. We change them. And then it's all onwards and upwards. Like Jack and the Beanstalk is Beanstalk, you know, the Beanstalk to heaven, the <laughs> the stairway to heaven, the, the ascension, right? It's back all the way up because the darkness has been shared and it has been changed because you took it inside of yourself. I think I'm going to leave this one there. <laughs> Good luck, guys, digesting this frequency. I love you. And there is my dog. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>